for our main event. Juan Manuel Lopez weighed in at 121 and a half pounds. Penalosa half pound heavier. Lopez rehydrated to 131 pounds. Penalosa to 128. Penalosa 36 years of age, although there's some dispute that he's actually 37 will be 38 in August. It doesn't really matter. He's got 444 rounds of professional experience. He's going to need all of that tonight. Let's take a look at the rules. Our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Juan Manuel Lopez, Jerry Penalosa fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A case of cause caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Coming to the ring, fearless Jerry Penalosa. fights with four knockouts a couple of years ago oh, he wondered if he really had the zest and the desire took a year off from boxing to refocus and re-energize himself what did he say i love boxing more than life and my wife he was in against danielle ponce de leon max he lost the fight but many thought he won it yeah, uh, he boxed very well. It wasn't the first time, and it wouldn't be the last that Jerry Penalosa was brought in as an underdog. As an opponent, he was supposed to lose, but many feel that he won. Then we saw him on HBO's Boxing After Dark in August of 2007, and just working the body of Johnny Gonzalez. Very impressive seventh-round win to pick up a Bantamweight title. Again, was supposed to lose, and this time he didn't leave it up to the judges. He knocked... Uh, Johnny Gonzalez out. Johnny Gonzalez was one of the young up-and-comers in boxing at the time, considered potential dominant fighter. Penalosa won by knockout. And when a guy says he loves boxing more than his life and his wife, you better take him seriously, and that is Jerry Penalosa. And here you saw Lopez, the counter puncher, with real knockout power. He figured to outbox Penalosa, excuse me, uh, uh, Ponce de Leon, but not knock him out in the first round emphatically as he did. Now a left hand, right hook finishes off Cesar Figaro in 47 seconds. And if it's possible to learn anything from a 40 second, seven second fight, it's that he was a little more aggressive, more of a stalker in that fight. And Sergio Medina went down three times in round number one, ended at 138 of round number one. He was totally outclassed. Medina that, was 33 and one, but it wasn't even close. And Lopez realizing that he outclasses his opponent in this fight, just stormed him. It was a total blitzkrieg, body shots, and got rid of him. Well, he'll try to make it four first round knockouts in a row. That has never been done in championship history, albeit with the numerous belts that exist now. It is a watered down stat, but it is still as significant in the fact that only Joe Lewis and Gerald McClellan have had three consecutive first round knockouts in championship fights. The fans here in Bayamon, Puerto Rico are here to see that. He says, I want to just win each round. We got 12 rounds to decide it. For the introductions, here is Michael Buffer. Das y caballeros de Coliseo Ruben Rodriguez, aquí en Bayamon, Puerto Rico.
Puerto Rico, Top Rank Incorporated, and PR Best Boxing presents Campeón versus Campeón, Champion versus Champion, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Junior Featherweight World Championship. 12 rounds, Campeonato Mundial OMB Junior Pluma, sanctioned by La Comisión de Puerto Rico, su Presidenta, Domes Delgado, y OMB Presidente Francisco Paco Barcarcel, sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Más Fina, y La Ciudad de Bayamón, y su Honorable Alcalde, Ramón Luis Rivera. This belt also presented in association with Golden Boy Promotions. At ringside, the three judges scoring, Los Tres Jueces, William Lurch, Michael Pernick, y Jose Roberto Torres, and inside the ring, the referee, Arbitro, Jose Rivera. Y ahora, Boricuas están listos! Boricuas están listos! Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas y Caballeros, uh, let's get ready to rumble! In la esquina azul, the blue corner, official weight 121 three quarter pounds, record professional. 54 victories, con 36 knockouts, 6 derrotas y 2 empates. Professional record 54 and 6, 2 draws, 36 knockouts. From Manila, Philippines, the two time world champion, WBO Bantamway, champion of the world, fearless, Jerry Penalosa. In La Esquina Roja, the red corner. Official weight, 121, one half pound. Record professional, perfecto. 24 combates, 24 victorias. Con 22 knockouts, 24 fights, 24 victories. With 22 KOs, Damas y Caballeros, El Invicto. Campeón Mundial OMB Junior Pluma de Caguas, Puerto Rico, Juan Manuel, Juan first round knockout. If he can score a knockout at all against the never been stopped Penalosa. Penalosa claims he's never even been off his feet. If he can even beat Penalosa convincingly, that's a statement. Young fighters like Lopez throughout history have been tripped up on their way to the very top by fighters, lesser fighters than Gary Penalosa. Round number one. Freddie Rhodes, the trainer for Penalosa, said in round number one, Lopez must feel out power, and Penalosa comes out and throws a big left hand. And they want to get the respect of Lopez and get this fight into the later rounds. Can they do it? Lopez, Lennox, even with all his great power, is technically very strong as far as his punch sequence and knowing what he's doing in the ring. I mean, he looks very poised in there. You know, he hasn't gotten started yet. He's tr still trying to feel out Penalosa. 
but part of the feel out process is you know for him it's the hook and uh, a lot of people for the job but he loves to feel people out with his right hook he told us that the reason why Penalosa hasn't been stopped yet is because Penalosa hasn't been hit the right way my punches are direct I'll use my jab no Penalosa is a good counter puncher but I need to be close Penalosa gets down low from that five foot frame to avoid any power from Lopez. Penalosa flicks out a jab. Lopez thumps a left hand right on the hip, and he's cautioned for that. Lopez, although this is the first round, he's keeping his head in a real stiff position when really he should be moving his head a little bit more side to side. Forty seconds remaining in round one. Lopez has three consecutive first round knockouts. And Lopez did a good, good job there of controlling a head. When, you know, when the guy's smaller than you and he's moving his head around, you always want to make sure that it's away from your head and you're controlling it. Double that right hook to the body, caught the attention of Penalosa. <laughs> Penalosa dips and moves away from some danger. Gets a right hand up to the head, but Lopez controls the action. End of round one. You're doing good. You're doing good, but try and put that uppercut on, on the right hand uppercut on the inside. Right? Right, be careful with him. Everything's good. Everything else is good. Relax, relax. It's okay. All right? Don't give him so much momentum. All right? He's trying to stay light. You, 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 you have to use your angle to get off to the side. Right, Here you go. So Jerry Penalosa gets through round number one against Juan Manuel Lopez. So that streak comes to an end. Three consecutive first round knockout wins for Lopez. We're in Bayamon, Puerto Rico for HBO's Boxing After Dark. The extremely talented 122 pound titleist Juan Manuel Lopez 24 0 with 22 knockouts. Against a former two time champion Jerry Penalosa scheduled for 12. Bob Papa, Lennox Lewis, Max Kellerman. Here at ringside, right hook from Penalosa. Lopez counters it. Lopez told us yesterday that there's no improvisation with him. It's not that he's one dimensional, he's clearly multi dimensional and has several different game plans. But the game plans have been mapped out carefully. Penalosa feels that Lopez is a good style for him. And Freddie Roach, Penalosa's celebrated trainer, and also obviously trainer of Manny Pacquiao, as you said, Bob, believes that whatever plan Lopez applies involves fighting in straight lines, and Penalosa therefore has to attack Lopez on angles. And that's what we're seeing start to play out here. Penalosa gave Freddie Roach some grief because he was not with him at the Daniel Ponce de Leon fight. He was training Manny Pacquiao. Now, as Pacquiao was growing up, Penalosa was his idol. The two are friends. He said to Freddie, I know my fight's next week, but go with Jerry. He's going to need you. Might need more than Freddie Rhodes tonight against the hard hitting Lopez. And what you see is even with the angles that Penalosa is trying to come at Lopez with, he's still absorbing shots. He's losing this round big. 
in a way we're not used to seeing him lose rounds. And though he has hit Lopez a couple times, it hasn't seemed to bother Juanma. Well, Lopez has an unbelievable right hook that is very effective, especially against Penelosa. Penelosa has no answer for that right now. The only answer for that is keeping his left hand as high as possible. But later on in the fight, that's that right hook by Lopez is going to be effect really effective in this fight. You know, there's a little gamesmanship before this fight. Uh, Lopez had his hands wrapped. The Roach Penalosa camp didn't like it, felt it was improper. They made, they wanted Lopez to cut the wraps off. Then they went to Penalosa's camp. They said there was too much gauze on the knuckles. Then the Lopez camp said, good, good. Freddie Roach said, no, we want you to rewrap. So then they went back to Penalosa, made him rewrap. Can you rattle a veteran guy like Penalosa, Lennox? Well, you know, he's a, he's a calm, cool, collected guy, and it didn't really phase him. You know, he realized this is, he's been in the sport so long, he realizes that these things may happen, may occur, so, uh, you know, it's used to him, it didn't allow it to affect him. Well, immediately following tonight's boxing, catch the third episode of our four-part series, Pacquiao Hatton 24-7. Step inside the lives of superstars Manny Pacquiao and Ricky Hatton as they make the final preparations for next week's Super Fight. If you missed any of the previous installments, you can catch up this Friday night at 8 p.m. We'll replay the first three shows leading up to the premiere of the fourth and final episode at 9.30. Following the finale, go to HBO.com for an overtime segment featuring interviews with trainers Freddie Roach, you see here tonight, right there, and Floyd Mayweather Sr. Don't let him put you on the ropes, okay? You want to stay off the ropes, all right? Yeah. Just like in the gym, let's go. You feel those ropes? Get off them, all right? You know better, okay? Yeah, I got you. Let's go. Interesting sidebar after round number one. The crowd was so into it that Lopez told his corner that he couldn't hear the instructions because the crowd was too loud. As we begin round number three. Lopez had 34 connects according to CompuBox in round number two. 32 were power shots. He threw 113 punches to Penelosa's 47. Seemed to be getting in a rhythm, Lennox, in round number two. Yeah, much more. You know, after the first round, first round is always a warm-up round, and he still needed to get that out of his head, whether he's going to knock him out or whether he's going to, you know, let him go into the later rounds. So far, Lopez has been extremely impressive against the wily Penalosa. And Penelosa has shorter arms. He should be winning the inside fight. But, you know, Lopez is such a remarkable fighter when it, when it comes to inside. He's dealing with him well. Good straight left hand from Lopez. Penelosa tries to step in with the left of his own. Again, Penelosa cautioned him. Keep the head up. Penelosa moving just enough so that Lopez not able to center up the shots just yet. And therefore, Juan Ma wisely goes to the body in close. There's a left hand right to the rib cage. Right to the rib cage. Penelosa comes back up top with the right hand of his own. And the body digs a right hook to the body, does Lopez. Never forgets about the body. Nice sequence of punches from Lopez there. I could be wrong, but it looks like the left side of Penelosa's face is starting to show the effects of this fight. And I can tell you what really caused the damage in that one. It has to be the right hook because he's thrown it so much, Lopez. He has one punch power in that 
right hand. There's a right hand to the ear. Penalosa tries to rip back shots of his own. They go toe to toe. Bad news for Penalosa. Trying to slug it out with Lopez. Showing a lot of heart, Penalosa. Water. Lopez landed 42 of 107 according to CompuBox. You're fighting his fight. Right? To the body and head of Jerry Penalosa. And we bring you Punch Zone. As you get a look at those 42 connects, you look at 17 of them went to the body. And that left hook to the body, to the right side of Penalosa's torso, hit 10 times in that round and then 13 right on the chin. Uh, and by the way, the seven to the other side of uh, of Penelope's body shows the good right hook to the body as a southpaw that Juan Ma throws. But also, must, some of those ten must be straight left hands to the body as well. So I hope you're enjoying our new feature punch zone. Yeah, which shows a lot of accuracy by Lopez. He throws some great punches and he's scoring well. 17 to the body. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored? You, you know, Bob, Jerry Penalos is moving up to a weight where he's never been before. And they moved up to 122 to fight this young kid who's big, strong, you know, bigger and stronger, hits harder. And he's standing in the middle of the ring, basically on a dime, and banging with Juan Manuel Lopez. And it's just not the right way to fight him. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Juan Manuel Lopez. He's just out punching Jerry Penalos. I mean, if Jerry Penalos thinks that he can stand and bang with this guy, I think he's fighting the wrong well, fight. Penelope Basically, that's what he's doing, Max. Penalosa did go to 22 to fight Ponce de Leon. And in fact, many thought he won, though he, though, though he was not awarded the decision. Um, I think by standing and trading a, with him, to address Harold's point, Penalosa's trying to do something that Juan Ma's not expecting. It's a sign of desperation early in the fight. Well, but Freddie Roach, his trainer, said early in the fight, we've got to stand there and let him feel some of our power and at least get some respect from Lopez and what their plan is is to get this thing into the late rounds where Lopez has only been past eight rounds once Penalosa 23 times. They know they can't out slug him and they cl and clearly Penalosa trusts his chin and he has a very good one. The only problem with that when you when you do that kind of thing you might, you're taking a chance of your own because what you're doing you're causing yourself to get hit while you're in those exchanges. But at this age you might as well take a chance. I think that's interesting, Lennox and, and Max, about Lopez is as powerful as he is, how patient he remains as he digs a two-handed combination to the body again. One of the reasons that Juan Manuel Lopez, if he's not the very best young fighter in the world, maybe Jorge Linares, whom I like very much, uh, but he's right there, is that he's the complete package. Yeah, I mean, he throws a good array of punches. You know, his combination selection is great. I mean, this is what he needs to do. You look at Penalosa just standing in the pocket and then trying to trade back with him. It's the hand speed, the movement, the athleticism, the punching power, the accuracy, the patience. You know, he's hooking you around to your head. If you're ducking, he's giving you an uppercut. If, if you're showing the body, he's hitting you with the body. I mean, his combinations are great. He throws punches to the head and to the body. He's mixing it up well. On top of that, southpaw. You saw that. Power punch stat with just 25 seconds to go all around. Huge advantage again for Lopez. They're betting that as this fight wears on, that the younger, inexperienced Lopez will make a mistake. Will Penalosa see that point in the fight? There's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's a towel. A little bit more on the top. And here we see Lopez having Penalosa against the rope, throwing 
all these different combinations all over the body on the right side the left side also controlling that head throwing his favorite right hook left hook Second go. Second go. in round number four according to CompuBox Lopez landed 34 punches 30 of them were power shots he's averaging throwing 101 punches around the Penalosa's 41 landing at a 31 to 10 advantage on average through the first four rounds. Round number five begins scheduled for 12. It should, as, as Harold pointed out last round, this is uh, one of his few forays into 100, the 122 pounds division Penalosa. He's small for the weight class. Lopez is big for the weight class. It's not just that Penalosa's in with a 122 pound phenom, it's a phenom who will soon be a full fledged 126 pound featherweight. So Lopez has, on top of that, it's in Lopez's backyard. He has everything going for him tonight. Penelos is trying to trying to get through with that right hook. He lands a combination. He throws it well, but it's still coming up a little short. And, and in spite of all those advantages Juan Ma has here, Penelos is fighting on gamely and fighting to win the fight. Fighters would be in survival mode already. You see, that's not what's on Jerry Penalosa's mind. It's not who he is. We've had a chance to visit with him numerous times. He's a pro's pro, passionate about the sport and his profession. But is he outgunned here tonight? Well, the question is can Juan Manuel Lopez break his Break Penalosa physically, knock him down forcibly off his feet, which Penalosa claims never happened before. He certainly has never been stopped in a fight. Can he break Penalosa's will? Can he break his spirit if he can't forcibly take him off his feet? Well, they exchange some right hands there, but it's Lopez's punches that have the pop behind him. And Penalosa throws that right hook, but what he needs to do is follow with that left, left, straight, straight left. Hey, he's landing that right hook. And then come back with that left hand. He's just depending on one punch, and that's just the right hook. Well, Penalosa is. It's the old Abbott and Costello routine, though, Lennox. If Penalosa goes through the one for the one and then the five, he's getting hit with the two, three, and four. It's not like Lopez is standing there taking the picture as Penalosa is throwing punches. A game Jerry Penalosa standing in the pocket against Juan Manuel Lopez. And Lopez is still controlling that head like a matador, you know. Anytime Penalosa puts his head down, he moves it to one side. Immediately following this telecast, you don't want to miss the third installment of the four-episode series, Pacquiao Hatton 24-7. One week to go. Training camp heating up in both camps as each fighter puts the finishing touches on their preparations. And next Saturday night, catch the mega matchup live on HBO Pay-Per-View. Pound for pound champ, Matty Pacquiao against British superstar, Ricky Hatton. Double the hook up for me, okay? Go okay. so hard, but after the hook, you've got to get off the ropes. Just like it's spin out, remember? Okay. Just like in the gym, you gotta spin out. Come on, work the arms, work the arms. Let's go, time to go. Turn, turn, turn. 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 50 of 117 in total. He landed as many power punches as Penalosa threw total punches in the round. Now keep in mind when a converted right-handed fighter, when a guy who's right-handed but fights as a southpaw as Juan Ma does, lands the good stiff jab, that lands like a power punch just about. Penalosa found something in the last round with that right hook to the head. Can he capitalize on that? 
Lennox, if you're Lopez right now, how do you try to take Penalosa out? Well, what I would do is actually give give myself a little more distance so my punches come from a little further so I can get a lot more power behind it. And I wouldn't be going for power, I'd be going more for speed. But he's, you know, he's breaking him down. Later on in the fight, he, it's going to be telling uh, for uh, Penalosa because right, right now he's just absorbing punches. He's looking for a way to get at Lopez, but what he's doing is wrong. He needs to be throwing more straight punches and combination punches, but he's trying to get that right hook off and it's not it's not working at the moment and all those body shots by Lopez you know in Lennox you're right and it's unbelievable Penalosa is still trying to get it Lopez he's really trying Lopez pumps out the right hand digs another hook to the body oh. back to the head he goes that one caught Penalosa's attention digs a double hook to the body Works to the head again. There's a left hand right to the cheek. Penalosa is hurt. How much longer will Freddy Roach allow his charge to take this kind of a beating? And if you look at Lopez, look, Lopez, Lopez is breaking you down because he's hitting one side of the body, then the other side. And then when, when Penalosa puts his hands up, he's going to come up in the middle with an uppercut. Sheer will keeping Penalosa on his feet right here, absorbing huge punishment from Juan Manuel Lopez. Crunching right hook to the head. Lopez look a little gassed to you guys. Lopez doesn't look gassed. He looks like he's in, in great shape, especially halfway through this fight. I think Penalosa looks a, more, a little bit more worn than anything. You see those power numbers. Distributed to both sides of the body of Penalosa. He has eaten so many body shots as Lopez doubles up the right hand, left hand goes to the body. And you can tell the ref, the ref is getting in close to it and seeing what's happening, especially looking at Penalosa and see if he's still there. Penalosa taking a huge pounding here in the sixth. And staying in the middle of the ring. Wanting to stay in Juan Manuel Lopez's face to let him know that he's still there. Well, according to the copy box numbers, he landed 70 of 123 power punches in the round. In the junior featherweight division, the 123 thrown passes the mark set by Wayne McCullough and Daniel Ponce de Leon, and the 70 connect in the power punches in the round passes the record set by Nestor Garza in 1996 in fights tracked by CompuBox. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored? Okay, Bob, six to nothing, 60 to 54, one man, well, Lopez. Bob, what an amazing display of guts, courage, and, you know, just the ability to take a punch by Jerry Penalosa. But unfortunately, that no. doesn't win your fights, doesn't right. win your rounds. I mean, I I'm just amazed that the guy can take a beating like this and stay on his feet. I thought about scoring the sixth round 10 to eight without a knockdown. You know, the guy took such a bad beating, but he kept punching back. So he scored a 10 to 9 in favor of Juan Manuel Lopez. But be as it may, Juan Manuel Lopez is standing right in front of Penalosa and pounding on him. Six to nothing, Lopez. Bob, he's setting records for punch output and connects. And Lopez is a savage power puncher. Mm -hmm. McCullough was more of a, a, a you know, volume puncher. And, and these are landing squarely on Penalosa's face. Ponce de Leon also threw 112 power punches against Penalosa in 2007 in the sixth round didn't land 70. No. In fact, he's not in the top 10 as far as power connects, despite all those power punches thrown. It's amazing Panelosa has been able to withstand this. But you do have to wonder with the close relationship that he has with Freddie Roach in his corner, 
and how long they've been together and the relationship that they have. When is enough enough? But then Penalosa throws combinations to the body and head. That's why he makes it difficult, Penalosa, because he shows no indication that he concedes anything in the fight. You know, given Penalosa's not really getting hit too square, a lot of the punches are glancing punches, but it looks a way to the, to the, to the judges. Judges look at you and say, wow, you're getting hit. But a lot of the punches are being blocked partially. I think a lot of them are getting through solidly too, though, Lennox. He's just throwing so many. Some are getting blocked, some are getting through. Well, when a guy says he loves boxing more than his life and his wife, uh, Jerry Penalosa is demonstrating that right now in the ring. Freddie Roach fought the same way, incidentally. Chopping left hand by Lopez, combination. Sands Penalosa back, he digs in with a right hook of his own, and then a left hand from Penalosa. The fact that Penalosa is having his moments here is unfathomable. But the moments are few and far between. And are they worth the price he could pay? on the inside. Are we winning? Yeah, we are. Oh, fight long. Juan Manuel Lopez landed 54 of 95 power shots in the round, 57%. And what's significant there is Juan Manuel Lopez had to ask, are we winning? That means Penalosa is doing enough to him in there where he's not sure. And you saw Freddie Roach ask Penalosa, are you here? And Penalosa's like, I'm fine. You know, if Penalosa wasn't getting hit so much, I would say this is a good strategy by him trying to get Lopez to punch himself out a little bit. As and you see the cycle of the effects of that psychological pressure in Juan Manuel asking that question. But the fact that he had to ask is, is he winning? And there Lopez digs double hooks to the body and then a right hook to the head, shoots the left hand over the top. Well, some boxers like to ask that, they just want to make sure. Penalosa a little low on that last counter shot. Good uppercut inside from Lopez. Also, the psychological part, when you've knocked out your last three opponents in the first round, and this guy, you're punching him with everything, and he's not going anywhere. You gotta wonder. Good counter right hand by Penalosa. Those shots are what made Juan Manuel ask that question in the corner. Those counter right hooks. I mean, clearly, Lopez is winning the fight huge every round, but he's getting hit cleanly. The sweat's flying. You only remember the ones you get hit by. Penalosa comes boring in. Trying to stay out of harm's way. Lopez with those heavy hands. Pounds a combination to the head. Shoots the left hand to the chest. Penalosa digs back to the body. Right hook up to the chin. Lopez scores with a big shot. Penalosa again with that right hook finds the mark. Jerry Penalosa is not human. I can't believe what I'm seeing. And it looks like Lopez, as you see these power punches landed in this round, 
as Lopez has just broken a record he set two rounds ago for Power Connects in his weight class. Keeps chugging along. And Lopez has to be There's careful. a right counter shot from Penalosa again. Has to be careful at this point because he's still throwing the same combinations. And right now he's getting a little bit weary. That means he's forgetting about his defense a little bit. So at this point, that's when you have to be careful. 84 power connects, a new fe junior featherweight record, according to CopyBox. Lopez, Jerry Penalosa. Lopez has controlled this fight from the start, but Penalosa, with some of those right hooks, has at least caught the attention of Lopez. Twice in this fight, Lopez has set CompuBox records for 122 pounds in power punches thrown and connects. He had 84 power connects in the last round. Ultimately, Freddie Roach has given Penalosa more rope here than you would imagine Freddie would normally give a fighter who was taking this kind of punishment for the reasons I mentioned. That said, basically told Penelos, you gotta knock him out here, or I'm gonna stop the fight. But you also have seen with this slugfest and the fact that Penelos has been able to land some good right hooks to the head and have some small moments that it's like Lopez has lost a little of his technique. Well, he's, he's slowed down a little bit. There's a little weariness in there. And this is where he has to be careful, especially with his defense, because we don't know how much Penalosa has stored up. He could come out with a wild shot where Lopez is going to have his hand down, especially that left hand, because Penalosa's great punch is that right hook. So let's say Penalosa did that and was to win the fight by a spectacular comeback knockout. Is it worth taking that risk, the risk he's taking physically here? If it is, certainly, by the end of this round, that's enough of a risk. Freddie Roach's timing is uh, not a moment too soon here, let's put it that way. Well, you know, one thing, you can always look at a opponent's upon his head. If Lopez hit him and all of a sudden his head went flashing back and you've seen the uh, sweat come off his head, then you would say, okay, this guy's getting hurt, he's getting a bit tired, but we're not seeing any of that. With that said, it's been a slower round albeit by Lopez's standards for Lopez. That's not doing Penalosa any favors because it's consistent trauma to the head. See? That time you saw the head snap back from Penalosa. Combination from Lopez, Penalosa digs right back in. And Lose misses with that right hook. That's how the ninth round ends. Did he do enough to buy another round from his trainer? I think he did. Okay. I'm not he's sure about that, guys. Okay, Freddie Rose said he's going to stop it. And Penelosa said it's okay. Freddie Roach has stopped this fight, I'm telling you. He did the right thing. 
Yeah, it's not like he's a, it's not like Canelo was winning the fight or going to win the fight. He still had a puncher's chance in there, but you know he knows he knows Canelo well, so he knew to make that decision. Given the circumstances, what was at stake, the way Canelo was fighting, etc., the kind of fighter Canelo is, given all those circumstances, that timing on that stoppage was perfect from Freddie Roach. He told him one more round to knock him out. He didn't do it. He continued to sustain a beating. Freddie Roach stopped the fight. Lopez could not break Penalosa physically, and he couldn't break his spirit, but he could beat Penalosa to the point where his trainer knew enough is enough. And Penalosa showed great heart and great determination, and he had great focus in that fight. He knew what he wanted to come back and do, but whether he had the strength to do it or the skill to do it is another question. He didn't. One ma victory for Lopez. 25 and 0 gets his 23rd stoppage. And a warm embrace for Jerry Penalosa, who showed the heart of a champion, showed the true professionalism. We saw it from both Penalosa and from Freddie Roach's trainer. He told him one more round. The fight was continuing in the same way, and Freddie Roach said, that is enough, Jerry. It's been a great ride, but you should not absorb any more than you have tonight. Wow. And you see the emotion. Trainer Freddie Roach. They've been together a long time. Freddie's saying you fought well. Fought a great fight. They've won titles together. Hey, beat Johnny Gonzalez a year and a half ago to win a bantamweight belt. Ten years after he first won a belt. But it's Lopez all night tonight in Puerto Rico. Official time of the stoppage. Cheers, Michael Buffer. At the end of round nine, after a magnificent effort, Jury Penalosa unable to continue. The bout comes to an end. El ganador de Caguas, Puerto Rico. El invicto, Juan Manuel. Juan Manuel. He'll turn 26 on June the 30th. But he is seasoned in prize fighting with his 25th victory and 23rd stoppage. Much to the delight of 10,000 fans here in Bayamon, Puerto Rico. Take a look at the final punch numbers in the fight decidedly in favor of Lopez. I mean, you can't get more dominant than that. 1,020 punches thrown in nine rounds. And then you look at the power punches and a CompuBox record was set tonight. First in round number six. 70 power connects in round six which was a new record 123 thrown and he bettered that in round eight landing 84 power shots in that round and throwing 129 all new records for CompuBox in the junior featherweight division. Max Kellerman is in the ring with Juan Ma. Congratulations Juan Ma on a tremendous performance. Before we get to you what are your thoughts about your opponent tonight, Jerry Penalosa? No, un gran, gran peleador, un gran peleador que, a pesar de la edad que tiene, pues está ahí porque un gran peleador y da muy fuerte. He's a great fighter, and even though his age, but he's a great fighter and he's very strong. You asked your corner, sixth or seventh round, am I winning? You were winning every round big. Why did you ask that question? Porque siempre que yo estoy peleando, me gusta que la esquina me oriente como estamos ganando, luciendo bien, luciendo mal. Y por eso siempre pregunto, siempre, es costumbre. Because every time I'm fighting, I always ask for guidance from my corner and see how I'm doing, if I'm going good, if it's bad, how's it going? I'm always looking for guidance. It seemed like maybe you asked because every now and then Penalosa would hit you with a good punch, a right hook that would catch your attention. Did you feel his power? No, no, sí, sí, él es un peleador fuerte, el gancho derecho es la mano más fuerte que tiene. En varias ocasiones pues me dio, me no me puso en malas condiciones, pero sí sentí los golpes de él. Definitely, definitely his right hook is his most powerful shot and on several times he did get me, but it didn't really sting. Okay. You just stopped the guy who's never been stopped. 
No one is able seemingly to offer you resistance to put you in a competitive fight. What's next? Bueno, vamos a descansar este, y hablar con la compañía, pero como he dicho en varias ocasiones, quiero los grandes retos, Israel Vázquez, Rafael Marquez, yo creo que con lo, con lo que hice hoy, pues, estoy de, o sea, he demostrado que puedo con ellos. Bueno, well, we'll take a rest and we'll see what the company wants to do, but obviously we're ready for big challenges, Israel Vázquez, Rafael Márquez, but whatever we decide, the company will decide. If you cannot get a fight with Vázquez or Márquez, even if you can, how much longer can you stay at 122 pounds? Ya, como anteriormente he dicho, yo ya espero para diciembre o enero del año 2010 para ya subir a las 126. Espero que ellos vengan antes que se acabe el año. December or January of 2010, I'll go to 126, but I hope they'll come before the end of the year. Thank you very much, Juanma. Tremendous. Muchas gracias a todos ustedes. Gracias a HBO. Puerto Rico, los quiero. Freddy, what were your thoughts? as the fight progressed? Uh, he was just too strong. You know, just physically, he was just overpowering. And uh, Jerry fought a very, very game fight. It was very difficult for me to stop the fight, but I had to make the right move, and um, he just was taking too much punishment. Ringside, we speculated that had it not been Penalosa, who has that kind of, who's as game as he is and takes a good punch, and has a chance seemingly to still win. He's landing punches here and there that seem to shake Lopez up a little bit. You would have stopped the fight sooner. If the stakes were different and it wasn't Penalosa, what would you have done? Yeah, I would definitely stop the fight sooner, but I thought Jerry might be able to turn around late in the rounds because he's an experienced guy, and I thought that one might get a little bit tired, but he didn't. It was a, a heroic performance by Penalosa and an appropriate stoppage by you, I thought. On to happier thoughts for you. Next week, junior welterweight super fight. What are your thoughts on Manny Pacquiao, your fighter, and Ricky Hatton, junior welterweight champion of the world? Uh, Manny Pacquiao is just on fire right now. Training camp, we just uh, had our last day of sparring. He's, um, he's in better shape th than he was for the Oscar fight. Um, he is a machine, and um, look, for, look for a knockout in that one, believe me. You and Floyd Sr. on the undercard in the future, perhaps? You know, um, Floyd talks a lot and he says he's the best, but um, good luck to him. He's going to need it. Thanks, Freddie. Thanks a lot. Bob? All right. Thanks, Max. And you know, immediately following us, you're going to get another look at Pacquiao Hatton 24-7. You'll hear more from Freddie Roach in that. And then on Friday night, our final installment in the four-part series, you'll hear more from Freddie concerning that fight and Floyd Mayweather Sr. You know, while Max was interviewing Juan Manuel Lopez, you may have heard a loud ovation in the background. It wasn't that they put Juan Manuel Lopez's face up on the screen here in the arena. It was for Jerry Penalosa. He stood along the ring ropes and waved to the fans here in Puerto Rico and took a bow and he received a thunderous ovation. That's the level of respect in this boxing hotbed that the fans had for a game warrior tonight in Jerry Penalosa, but their man Juan Manuel Lopez was much better. We started the evening off with Lamont Peterson, the young prospect out of Washington, D.C., against Willie Blaine. Lamont Peterson was able to finish off Blaine in the seventh round. Blaine injured his hand in the sixth round, tried it in round number seven, could not continue, but a good win in the 140 pound weight class for Lamont Peterson as he picked up an interim belt. But what we saw tonight was Juan Manuel Lopez. We've talked about it earlier this evening, this great fight tradition here in Puerto Rico, and along with Miguel Cotto. Juan Manuel Lopez is a star not a rising star a star here in Puerto Rico and he sends the fans home happy with a very thorough victory against a very game Jerry Penalosa. Well in case you miss any of tonight's action here on HBO you can catch it in its entirety on HBO or HBO 2 at the dates and times listed below. Oh, he wondered if he really had the zest and the desire took a year off from boxing to refocus and re-energize himself. What did he say? I love boxing more than life and my wife. He was in against Daniel Ponce de Leon. Max, he lost the fight, but many thought he won it. Yeah, uh, he boxed very well. It wasn't the first time, and it wouldn't be the last that Jerry Penaloso was brought in as an underdog, as an opponent he was supposed to lose, but many feel that he won. Then we saw him on HBO's Boxing After Dark in August of 2007. And just working the body of Johnny Gonzalez. Very impressive seventh round win to pick up a Bantamweight title. Again, was supposed to lose, and this time he didn't leave it up to the judges. He knocked 
Uh, Johnny Gonzalez out. Johnny Gonzalez was one of the young up-and-comers in boxing at the time, considered potential dominant fighter. Penalosa won by knockout. And when a guy says he loves boxing more than his life and his wife, you better take him seriously, and that is Jerry Penalosa. Juan Manuel. Juan Manuel For our main event, Juan Manuel Lopez weighed in at 121 and a half pounds. Penalosa half pound heavier. Lopez rehydrated to 131 pounds. Penalosa to 128. Penalosa, 36 years of age, although there's some dispute that he's actually 37 and will be 38 in August. It doesn't really matter. He's got 444 rounds of professional experience. He's going to need all of that tonight. Let's take a look at the rules. Our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Juan Manuel Lopez, Jerry Penalosa fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A case of cuts caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Coming to the ring, fearless Jerry Penalosa. fights with four knockouts a couple of years ago 47 seconds and if it's possible to learn anything from a 40 second seven second fight it's that he was a little more aggressive more of a stalker in that fight and Sergio Medina went down three times in round number one ended at 138 of round number one he was totally outclassed Medina now, was 33 and one but it wasn't even close and Lopez realizing that he outclasses his opponent in this fight just stormed him it was a total blitzkrieg body shots and got rid of him well, he'll try to make it four first-round knockouts in a row. That has never been done in championship history, albeit with the numerous belts that exist now. It is a watered-down stat, but it is still as significant in the fact that only Joe Lewis and Gerald McClellan have had three consecutive first-round knockouts in championship fights. The fans here in Bayamon, Puerto Rico, are here to see that. He says, I want to just win each round. We got 12 rounds to decide it. For the introductions, here is Michael Buffer. Das y caballeros de Coliseo Ruben Rodriguez. Aquí en Bayamon, Puerto Rico. Top Rank Incorporated. And be our best boxing presenter, campeón versus campeón, champion versus champion. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Junior Featherweight World Championship. 12 rounds, Campeonato Mundial OMB Junior Pluma. Sanctioned by La Comisión de Puerto Rico, su Presidenta, Domes Delgado, y OMB Presidente Francisco Paco Barcarcel. Sponsored by Corona Extra. La cerveza más fina y la ciudad de Bayamón y su honorable alcalde, Ramon Luis Rivera. This belt also presented in association with Golden Boy Promotions. At ringside, the three judges scoring, Los Tres Jueces, William Lurch, Michael Pernick, y Jose Roberto Torres, and inside the ring, the referee, Arbitro Jose Rivera. Y ahora, Boricuas están listos. Boricuas están listos. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, uh, let's get
Rico in all of sports, Juan Manuel Lopez. He won the title on June the 6th of 2008 against Daniel Ponce de Leon, the same man that went 12 rounds with Penalosa. Lopez finished him off in round number one. And here you saw Lopez, the counter puncher, with real knockout power. He figured to outbox Penalosa, excuse me, uh, uh, Ponce de Leon, but not knock him out in the first round emphatically as he did. Now a left hand right hook finishes off Cesar Figueroa in 14.